Right now, legal marijuana is available just a short drive away. We'll tell you how authorities are keeping a close eye on the border. And it's not the end of the season that Wisconsin fans wanted with a disappointing loss in the Rose Bowl. We have all the reaction from the team and fans in Pasadena straight ahead. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, folks, and thanks for joining us on your Thursday, January 2nd, 2020. That's I'm weird. Leo Linshide. Isn't that it's weird? weird to say it. I'm Josh Breider. <laughs> Meteorologist Hattie McLean is here now with a very warm start to this new decade. Yeah, it certainly doesn't feel like January when you step outside this morning. Temperatures are in the 30s and even 40s in some spots. Take a live look from the WIC TV Sky Camera. Still not able to see a whole lot at this hour. Sunrise just before 7.30. By the end of the month, though, you're really going to start to notice an increase in the daylight. We're going to add about 50 minutes of daylight this month. Doppler track this morning is showing you just a few flurries or even sprinkles left north of Madison. Most of the area, though, waking up dry today. We're looking at high temperatures in the mid 40s this afternoon. Again, starting off on quite a mild note. It's not going to be quite as windy, though, as it was yesterday. Here's a look at your first alert traffic maps. We'll see what's happening on area roads. Maybe a few more people heading to work today but still looking pretty quiet right now. No major delays or any accidents to tell you about at this time. Coming up in about 10 minutes, we will talk about chances for snow. So this mild weather is not going to stick around too long. All right, thank you very much, Hattie. Badgers fans are a little bummed this morning after Wisconsin lost the Rose Bowl by just one point to the Oregon Ducks. Melissa Kim has been with the team all week in Southern California and has their reaction after a tough end of the season. Well, definitely a very somber and quiet locker room last night for the Badgers after they lost to Oregon in the Rose Bowl. Now, if you look at the straight numbers, Wisconsin did beat Oregon in nearly every single offensive statistical category. But the two numbers that made the difference, four turnovers and nine penalties. It started off way better, though. Opening kickoff here, Aaron Cruikshank with the ball, and he'll turn his legs into fire mode. 95 yards to the house, his second of the season, and only the third kick return touchdown in Rose Bowl history. We've got a tie game. Fast forward to the end of the first half. Jack Cohn finding his favorite target, Quintez Cephas, for the 11-yard score. Badgers in business. They're in the lead 17-14 at halftime. To the fourth quarter now. This was one of the pivotal points in the game. Danny Davis with the ball. He'll fumble it. Bryson Young recovering for the Ducks. And then on the ensuing drive, Justin Herbert on the QB keeper for 30 yards, his third rushing touchdown of the game, and that would seal the deal for Oregon. Badgers lose at the Rose Bowl for the fourth straight time, 28 to 27 the final. Head coach Paul Chris says they really beat themselves in this one. The guys put it out there, and yep, everyone knows football. It's did some things that make it harder to win, and uh, we didn't overcome that, but uh, appreciate this team a ton. And, uh, and yet we'd like to have finished it obviously differently. We didn't. And we just weren't as clean as we should have been. You know, they definitely capitalized on it. You know, hats off to them. It's a good team over there. Um, you know, whenever you're playing a good team and you shoot yourself in the foot too many times, you know, it definitely makes it harder and harder to win. But, you know, at the end of the day, still need to find a way to overcome that. Now, this loss obviously tough for the outgoing seniors like Chris Orr, but also for Jonathan Taylor, who most likely has played in his last game in a Badgers uniform. JT finishing with 94 yards rushing and 43 yards receiving, but his impact on this program is way bigger than those numbers. I asked him what these last three years representing the Badgers has been like. He says he wouldn't trade it for anything. It's been amazing. You know, everyone always asks me about Camp Randall, but... Camp Randall is just a stadium. It's just like any other stadium, but it's the, it's the people that fill the stadium. It's the fans that take the time out of their jobs, their daily lives, day in and day out, to spend their hard-earned money to come and watch us, you know, play the game that we love. So it's definitely the fans that make Camp Randall what it is. And, you know, coming out here, I mean, they, we travel well. I mean, they made it feel just like Camp Randall today. Now, JT was one of the last players to leave the field on the team, and he came out to a loud standing ovation from a number of Badgers fans who stuck around to see him. And if he does end up leaving, he will truly be one of the most missed players on this team. At the Rose Bowl, Melissa Kim, News 3 this morning. Melissa, thank you. Of course, thousands of fans made the pilgrimage to Pasadena for the Badgers' first Rose Bowl since 2013. And even though the end result wasn't what they wanted, many still said the trip was worth it. Our Eric Franke has their reaction. 
After a great few days for Badger fans in Southern California, all that was really left was to win the game. But with all those turnovers, well, they were just too much to overcome. You know, the Badger fans always show up, right? This was about a 50-50 split in this stadium. The Oregon fans going home happy in this one. And despite the frustration of this loss, the Badger fans, they stayed late. They partied in the fifth quarter and still realize that any season that ends in Pasadena is a good one. Fun week, it's a blast, you know, the, the whole stadium and everything here, it's a very fun venue, you know. We're, we're just here for fun at first, but once uh, the game gets going, you get a little more into it, we're obviously a little disappointed in the loss, but hey, maybe we can get like six more Rose Bowls, maybe we get like one of the six. It was fun, yeah. yeah. The, the game didn't end up the way we wanted to. You know, it was kind of disappointing how they uh, turned the ball over a lot and just didn't play very well. I mean, they were they were still in it till the end, so, I mean, that was good. It was a great game. I mean, we didn't play the way we usually play. Missed a field goal, Hunter dropped the, the ball. I mean, it's not their responsibility, but uh, hey, great experience. We loved it. You know, we were here with a friend. Well, it's four straight losses and counting for the Wisconsin Badgers in the Rose Bowl, but you just sense these fans, they'll follow this team wherever they take them in the postseason. In Pasadena at the Rose Bowl, Eric Franke, News 3 Now This Morning. Thank you very much, Eric. Gosh, what a heartbreaking end of the season. Well, it's still so exciting. It I was. mean, even watching the Rose Bowl parade earlier in the day and seeing the Badger marching band going through, I mean, it was just so awesome. Exactly what Eric said there. A season that ends at the Rose Bowl, not a bad season. Yeah, congrats to them for a nice, well-deserved time there. All right, more headlines right now. Residents of a building in downtown Madison are still in the dark as part of a power outage that lasts several days. Managers at the Ovation on Johnson Street say damage to electrical equipment on New Year's Eve is causing the partial outage. They're telling residents there to try to find replacement parts, but those parts are custom made and hard to find, meaning the outage could last five to six days. In the meantime, they're putting up residents at area hotels. The man accused of killing his sister on Christmas Eve is expected in court later this morning. 57-year-old Joseph Green faces a charge of first-degree intentional homicide in the death of his sister, Sheila. Police say Green shot her 15 times at her house on South Midvale Boulevard and called 911 before hanging up. A gun was found in a dumpster outside of Green's apartment building with bullets matching those used in the shooting. Green is being held on a million dollar cash bond. He's facing a life sentence. A new year means new laws and just to our south, recreational marijuana is now legal in Illinois. It turns out a Madison resident was the first person to buy marijuana from a dispensary in Rockford on the first day of legal sales. And to be number one versus number 10. Danny Connors was 10th in line when Denver legalized recreational sales. He ensured a number one spot in line in Rockford by arriving before midnight on New Year's Eve. It's freedom. When they ask me, what's it mean to you coming so far out, it means I don't have to look over my shoulder. Connors was not alone in his determination. Some camped out overnight in their cars waiting for the dispensary to open at 6 a.m. Illinois is the 11th state to legalize recreational marijuana. Marijuana is still illegal in Wisconsin, and officials who work along the state border with Illinois say they expect a ton of activity. Officers with the Wisconsin State Patrol say they will pull over any driver if they have any indication their car might contain marijuana, even if it's legally obtained. A first-time marijuana possession offense is considered a misdemeanor and can get you up to six months behind bars along with a $1,000 fine. If a person is caught a second time, that crime becomes a felony with up to three and a half years behind bars and a $10,000 fine. In addition to the legalization of recreational marijuana in Illinois, several other laws went into effect across the country for the new year. The state also banned DNA data collection companies like Ancestry.com from sharing test results with insurance companies unless users give permission. California residents can now see the information collected about them and stop them from sharing it. Right now, a local nightclub with a history of weapons violations is officially closed for the next three months. Visions Nightclub closed their doors at 5 last night. The city's Alcohol License and Review Committee issued the club a 90-day liquor license suspension back in November. The club has decided in that time their doors will remain closed. Those owners will need to come up with various security upgrades, including new surveillance systems and a weapon screening policy. Police in Fitchburg are investigating a New Year's Eve robbery at Panchero's. Officers say a man got away with cash after walking into the store and implying a threat. A canine team wasn't able to track the suspect. Police are asking anyone with information to call Fitchburg police. 
The National Transportation Safety Board says plans are now underway to recover the tour helicopter crash in Hawaii last week. That crash killed all seven passengers on board, including Madison resident Amy Gannon and her 13-year-old daughter Jocelyn. They say the helicopter fell 100 feet after hitting the ridge. It then caught fire, consuming much of the wreckage. The NTSB says their goal is to move the wreckage to a secure location where it can be more thoroughly examined. Around the state this morning, no arrests have been made after an hours-long standoff in Fond du Lac. Police were called to a home just after 6.30 yesterday morning after multiple reports of shots fired. Officers heard gunshots when they arrived on the scene, but they weren't able to make contact with the shooter. SWAT teams arrived soon after, and area neighbors had to be put on lockdown. Three people eventually walked out of the house around five hours later. 610 right now. Setting goals for the new year can be overwhelming, especially when it comes to our health. Coming up, we sit down with our medical expert, Dr. Mara, to talk about three things you should start doing in 2020. But first, Hattie says a warm start to the new year will continue today, but temperatures are going to start to drop soon, folks. She'll tell us when in her first alert forecast next on News 3 Now This Morning. Go to Amazon. Good morning from the Hattio Patio, where there's still some snow on the ground, but not much. Quite a bit of melting taking place yesterday and overnight with temperatures above the freezing point. And take a look at where we stand so far with snow this season. We had most of our snow in October and early November. Since then, it's been pretty quiet, but we've uh, added up over 18 inches of snow, which is right about normal for this time of the season. Last year, by comparison, at this time, we'd only received a little over nine inches of snow. So we're above where we were last year. We'll see what happens for the month of January. We have a little bit of snow in our forecast coming up, but not much. The snow depth map again, an inch or two left on the ground here in southern Wisconsin, but that might change through the day today again with temperatures in the 40s. 
There is some snow on the radar map though to the north this morning. Most of that snow is shifting into the UP at this hour. We've had a few sprinkles and flurries for our northern viewing area, but those have pretty much come to an end. Can't rule out a few sprinkles this afternoon though, as a weak system moves through the region. That'll bring pl plenty of cloud cover to the area as well. You can see that batch of cloud cover working its way up through Iowa pretty quickly. It's moving in this direction, so any bit of clearing that we have early today is not going to last too long. Southwest winds at 8, taking temperatures in the upper 30s this morning and dropping that wind chill back into the low 30s, but still a wind chill above 30 degrees is nothing to complain about. Temperatures across the region again, 40s through the state, uh, through the uh, Mississippi, rather the Wisconsin River Valley, get my river straight here. 40 degrees in Lone Rock right now, 40 in Boscobel, 37 in the Dells, 39 in Janesville. So certainly not feeling like January. Our future track wind speeds from the southwest still around 15 miles an hour this morning. Although those winds are going to start to diminish through the afternoon hours. So it's definitely not going to be as windy for the second part of the day. Your future track forecast model shows you a broken cloud cover this morning, but turning mostly cloudy through the afternoon. High temperatures will be in the mid 40s, still around 40 if you're heading home from work at five today and then not getting too much cooler during the overnight hours with those clouds lingering. As I mentioned, though, there was a chance for snow coming up and it's later in the day on Friday. It looks like any accumulations will be less than an inch. We'll drop back to highs in the 30s then through the weekend, but right now the forecast looks dry. Time to get a look at your traffic maps this morning. We'll send it over to Stacy Kay with all the details. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning. It is a quiet start so far in the Beltline with no major delays showing up yet in either direction. Checking other roads here in Dane County, just starting to see a few brake lights at Stoughton approaching the Beltline. East Washington is fine so far. More volume expected in the coming hour, but the college kids are still off, so it won't be that bad. Other main routes heading into the city, moving along at the posted speeds, no crashes or delays. With your first alert traffic, I'm Stacy Kay. As we start this new year, there's a lot on all of our to-do lists that should include taking care of our health. Dr. Mara from SSM Health is here with the top three things that we need to know about our health in this new year. Good morning. Good morning. So this is a big <laughs> thing. A lot of people, that's always their New Year's resolution. How many of us don't even make a resolution now because it's basically become a joke? Either we know we're not going to go for it or we made the same resolution the past 10 years. So this is almost a reverse wish list. This is Dr. Mara's wish list. These are things that I wish wish people would do for their health or ask their doctor, things like that. So number one is if you have a fear, so many of us have a fear, I'm overweight, my family member was diagnosed with cancer, I'm afraid I'm going to have multiple sclerosis, what about dementia, all these things. Whatever your fear is, talking to your doctor, saying, hey, doctor, whoever your doctor is, this is my concern, this is my fear for the future. How realistic is it that this is a fear for me and what preventative steps can I do to really fight that fear that you have. That's the first thing. The second thing is preventative measures. So a lot of us are taking vitamins, a lot of us spend money on expensive vitamins, but how much are those vitamins really evidence-based? And number two, what other measures can we take that are just good for our health? So there are a lot of preventative measures we can take that are life-saving, whether it's a test, whether it's a vaccine, whether it's uh, other things that we can do, really talking to your doctor and say preventatively, what can I do to really save my life or just live the best life that I possibly can? And number three, is why am I taking this medicine? So many of us have a laundry list of medicines that we take either daily, weekly, monthly, but talking to your doctor and really understanding why am I taking this? All too often patients will come in and say, here's the medicines I'm taking. And I'll say, well, why do you take this one? Why do you take this one? They're not as intuitive as you think because many medications can have different indications. Someone may take it for blood pressure. Another person may take that same medication for headaches. Really understanding why you're taking those medications and taking control of your health. So if I have one message for people this year, it's to really take control of your health. It's not to set unrealistic expectations or goals that eventually you won't keep. It's not to start a diet that's really trendy or a fad. It's really focusing on what your goals, your objectives are and making a plan and putting that in place. So instead of dieting, for example, really saying what are the healthy foods that I should be eating and incorporating those healthy foods into your life. What are some of the favorite tips you have for New Year's? Yeah, I think it's one of those things, you know, trying to not 
put yourself out there as far as you know you're mentioning trying to do something that's too Pushing much pushing yourself you. too far too far sometimes just a little bit of a change can make all the difference and i think that's where a lot of people fall off of the new year's resolution by the end of january because it's just not even feasible exactly so instead of setting that unrealistic expectation that i'm going to sign up for an expensive gym membership i'm going to work out so hard i'm going to lose 50 pounds maybe just taking the steps every day at work instead of taking the elevator so just those little little changes will go really far all right dr Mayor, happy new year happy new year and happy healthy new us. year <laughs> yes. All right. And we'll be right back after this. You're watching News 3 Now This Morning. Six twenty-three on a Thursday morning. Happy New Year to all of you joining us this morning. And it's not really feeling like January out there. No, it certainly isn't. Temperatures are still in the thirties right now, even some forties wow. on the map. So enjoy it. It's not going to last too long. But here's a current look at the temperatures this morning: thirty-seven in the Dells. I mentioned there were forties through the Wisconsin River Valley, Lone Rock, and Bosqueville at forty degrees. Janesville's pretty close at thirty-nine right now. So as you send the kids to the bus stop, I know some of them heading back to school today. Look for a lot of clouds, especially through the afternoon, but look at these high temperatures, 44 degrees later on this afternoon. You definitely don't need as many layers. Coming up in just a few minutes, we are going to talk more about the travel weather and where you might see delays heading into the upcoming weekend. All right, Hattie, thank you. If you're like a lot of people, you're probably looking to eat a little bit healthier in this new year. You might even be thinking about starting a detox or a cleanse, but you might be wondering what those actually do for your body. Heather Brown decided to find out. We can cleanse with soup, smoothies, juice. And then there's this secret detox drink. Water, lemon juice, apple cider vinegar, cinnamon, cayenne pepper, and honey. Bottoms up. Whoa! 
Have you ever tried a detox diet? I try. I think I'm scared of it, to be honest. I saw it on Pinterest, <laughs> and I think everything on Pinterest is great. <laughs> Are these cleanses going to change my life? Probably not. <laughs> Family doctor Matt Hockett says patients always ask him about stuff they read online. Are they bad for me? No, generally they're not harmful. Mm -hmm. They're just not doing quite as much, they don't have quite as much benefit as people think that they would have. In other words, Beyonce's lemonade diet won't turn you into All the single lady. Beyonce. Well, the body is actually an amazing detoxifier in and of itself. We have liver and kidneys and lungs that usually gets rid of whatever toxins people have built up. A lot of people think by increasing the amount that you put out through urination or mm -hmm. stool that you're going to increase the rate that the, that your normal toxins would leave, but clinically it just doesn't bear out. We use cleanse to describe a number of things, from juicing to Whole30. I've heard people say, I detox by cutting sugar. Well, we want to cut out the sweets. Cutting carbs, less alcohol. Those all sound like very good things. So no brownies until February? I mean, I'm not going to commit to that, but that would be the idea. Yeah. I think the problem with juice is we miss out on the fiber, and that's probably the most important part of that fruit or that vegetable. Okay. So I'd rather have people just eat a healthy diet with plenty of fruits and vegetables, drink lots of fluids, and get plenty of exercise. So you've learned. Yes, <laughs> I've definitely learned. Heather Brown. I do still think Pinterest is great. WCCO 4 News. I agree. Pinterest is great. Yeah. The doctor says people drop weight on those cleanses because they're not eating as much, not because of the cleanse itself. So we are going to be doing our own little cleanse here. Committed. We're doing Whole30. I've done it before. I've convinced Josh to give it a shot with me. Yeah, so we're starting on Monday, and then we'll be doing some workouts in there, too. So Are you nervous? Um, A little bit. I've kind of been prepping a little bit already just because I got so sick of eating so much around the holidays. Sure. I think it's going to be fine. I think it's just one of those things getting used to it and kind of resetting the mind and body, and I think we'll be able to... We'll be, we'll be good. That's what it's all about is the reset. You can't expect to live your life on Whole30 yeah. because you do cut out so many different things. But for me, it's worked as a nice reset. Okay, cut back on the sugar, cut back on the beer, cut back on the cheese. Lord knows I love me some cheese. And I think so. it's like whatever works for you, too. Everyone's bodies are different, exactly. and you have to find what, what works for you and go with it. So. Stay tuned for how it goes, folks. <laughs> 626 your time now. There is still more news ahead on your Thursday morning. Coming up, we'll tell you how gas prices are looking heading into a new decade and whether you can expect to pay more at the pump in 2020. You're watching News 3 Now this morning. For reliable weather day in and day out, watch First Alert Weather.
From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this Thursday, January 2nd, 2020. I'm Josh Breider. And I'm Leah Lynchide, along with meteorologist Hattie McLean, bringing us a bit of a warm-up to start the year. That is true. Yes, temperatures really didn't cool down much overnight. If you're just waking up, we still have a lot of clouds in the area. There have been a few sprinkles and flurries to the north, but those have come to an end for southern Wisconsin. Temperatures are the big story this morning. Here are the current readings. 37 in Madison and the Dells. 39 in Janesville, even 40 in Boscobel and Lone Rock right now. That snow on the ground isn't going to last too long with temperatures like that. We will climb into the mid 40s this afternoon. Just a slight chance for a few sprinkles. Here's a look at your traffic maps now. Things may be a little busier today than they have been so far this week. Maybe a few more people heading back to work. It is starting to get a little busier on the Beltline right at Stoughton Road, but no major issues to tell you about right now. Drive times are still normal for this time of the morning. Coming up in just a few minutes, we'll talk about that bus stop weather forecast and what you can expect heading into the weekend. All right, thank you very much, Hattie. We're following a developing story overseas this morning after days of violence at the U.S. Embassy in Iraq. That violence has stopped this morning, but tensions remain high. Iranian-backed protesters set fires through rocks and painted anti-American graffiti at the embassy for two days. They also destroyed a reception building at the compound's perimeter. They only left after militia leaders said they, their message that American soldiers were unwelcome in Iraq has was heard. New this morning, at least 17 people have been declared missing, and one person has died as fires continue to rage across Australia. Video from Reuters shows the fires burning in the state of Victoria. It's around 170 miles from the capital city of Melbourne. 24 communities have been completely isolated by the raging brush fires. So far, the fires have destroyed 10 million acres in Australia. It's estimated that more than 500 million animals have died since the fires began in September. New blazes are sparking almost daily by extreme heat and windy conditions. Back here in the U.S., police are investigating more incidents of violence against people of the Jewish faith. More than a dozen Jewish people have been attacked in the New York area since December 23rd, the latest on New Year's Day. That's when a 15-year-old boy was robbed at knife point while riding the bus in Brooklyn. The boy's father says the robbers took the yarmulke off his head and stole his ear pods while threatening him. Also in Brooklyn, police say two women yelled anti-Semitic slurs at a Jewish man before attacking him. More than 5,000 people in Wisconsin reported being sexually assaulted in 2018, according to law enforcement across the state. As victims look for justice in the current system, many run into blocks that prevent them from ever getting closure. Police departments and sheriff's offices often have to take on dozens of cases at a time. And even with upgrades to technology in DNA testing, there are limitations there as well. Advocates say there is something we can all do to help. That starts with a conversation. I think we really need to be talking about trauma. We need to talk about the impacts of trauma on memory, on recollection. We need to talk about, um, you know, why it is that we may not want to believe a victim. Coming up tonight on News 3 Now at 10, Emmy Reed shares the story of one victim who's going through the system right now. She's diving into the data behind the thousands of sexual assaults in Wisconsin to find out what's going right and what we still need to work on. Again, that's tonight at 10. GasBuddy.com says things should be fairly consistent at the pump in 2020. On average, they say prices will actually be two cents lower than last year at $2.60 per gallon. GasBuddy says February should have the lowest prices of the year and the highest should be in May, which is when refiners switch to summer blends. 6.34 right now, the Badgers football season is at a disappointing end after a one-point loss in the Rose Bowl. Tough one to watch. It was a close game against the Oregon Ducks, but turnovers and penalties ultimately cost Wisconsin their first Rose Bowl win in 20 years. The Badgers were leading in the fourth quarter when a fumble by Danny Davis allowed Oregon to take over and score the go-ahead touchdown. Final score, Oregon 28, Wisconsin 27. The Badgers finished the year with a record of 10 and 4. At Lucky's Bar on Regent Street, the energy was certainly high during the game right up until the end. Badger fans say it was a fun game to watch and they're happy the Badgers made it this far, especially after the upsetting loss to Illinois earlier this season. Fans even say they think the Badgers outplayed the Ducks in many respects, except when it came to turnovers leading to that disappointing one-point loss.
not happy. I mean, Oregon beat us in the Rose Bowl several years ago. We lost three in a row, so it's been since 2000 since we won one. So it's just been not a good start to the year. A little disappointed. Maybe a little cheated. That last call was pretty tough, but they gave it their best. You know, sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way, right? It's hard to be too upset with any season that ends with a spot in the Rose Bowl. The Badgers fans we talked to said they're already looking forward to the start of next season. Still heartbreaking. I know, but they had such a great season. It was just fun to see them there. It's always next year. There you go. All right, still ahead in the morning sprint, we'll tell you how Wisconsin State Patrol officers are handling the legalization of marijuana just across the border. And we'll also introduce you to the newest members of the community, the first babies born in the new decade. Aww. A little cuteness is straight ahead for you on News 3 Now this morning. All right, we always ask you to share your morning with us here on News 3 Now this morning, and Chrissy Hall sent in this stunning photo of the Mount Hope tree. This is like one of my favorite shots of across Wisconsin. I know we have like several updates and stories, but like the color on this photo is fantastic. The tree itself is so inspiring. Like you said, we've continued to do stories on it over the years. People have continued to send in pictures. I think this might be the first time I've seen a sunrise behind it. Yeah, this is fantastic. I feel like this is the hope tree for a new year, right? I love that. Thank you for sending that in, Chrissy. Got to start off positive. Thank you, Cher or Chrissy. If you've got a photo you'd like to share with us, please do so and send it to us over on our Facebook page. All right, animal lovers looking to give back in the new year. Listen up. Veterinarians are nursing a very sick kitten back to health after he was found by Devil's Head Resort New Year's Eve. Yeah, this is a really sad story. The Sauk County Humane Society says an out-of-state couple took a wrong turn and found Mikey on a desolate highway. His eyes were cake shut from a gunk from a bad upper respiratory infection. 
The Humane Society believes the about 10-week-old kitten was alone for a while because of his matted fur and dead leaves frozen to his skin. It's heartbreaking I, it, to think that a few more hours and he probably wouldn't have made it. He is so thin and with the snowstorm, it was so cold out. Mikey is doing much better this morning. He loves chin rubs and people. I do too. <laughs> but because of how sick he is with pneumonia, he's being cared for at the VCA Veterinary Center in Middleton. Poor guy. I hope somebody hears the story and can help oh, out a little man, bit. Man, at least he's looking a lot better he this is. morning, so that's good. A Monona family started off their new year by welcoming a new baby girl. Nora Madeline Elsmo was born at St. Mary's Hospital early Wednesday morning. Her mom, Andrea, says she wasn't expecting to deliver Nora so soon, but says delivering one of the first babies of the decade is pretty nice because it comes with extra photos and memories from the press coverage. Nora weighs 8 pounds and is 20 inches long. Mom Andrea was also born at St. Mary's three decades ago. How cute. What an adorable little guy. I love it. The first baby born in 2020 at Unity Point Health Meritor Hospital was Jace Eli. He was born at 1.28 a.m. and weighed 6 pounds 9 ounces. Parents Ashley and Cameron are from Fall River. A little baby news to start the morning, not I bad. know, yeah, I know it's always that moment where you're wondering if they're going to come in on New Year's Eve yeah. or New Year's Day. So it's just kind of like, kind of cool and good for them. And first of the decade, not just the year. There you go. Very cool. All right, it's definitely going to be a memorable, memorable, memor memorable New Year's for those families. Welcome back. <laughs> oh yeah, it sounds like a morning, doesn't it? Also memorable, the warm temperatures we're having to start the new year. Hattie's stocking more temperatures in the 40s on your Thursday, but a cool down is on the way. She'll tell us when that's coming up in her first alert forecast. And if you want to have more memorable parts of your <laughs> life, you can send in your little kid turning three pictures. We'll be right back. Oh boy. <laughs> Look who's the
Live look outside at 645 on a Thursday morning and a beautiful shot of the sunrise as we enter this new year, 2020. Not a bad look at the new decade, huh? I know. It's good to see a little sunshine out there, Hattie, but it looks like we've got some rain showers maybe on the way this afternoon. Yeah, there is a chance for a few rain showers, but that means it's warm enough for rain. We're off to a very mild start this morning. Temperatures in the 30s. That's well above the normals for this time of the year. In fact, this is the coldest time of the year here in Madison. Our normals don't change much from the start to the end of the month. The coldest temperature ever recorded in Madison occurred in January. That's minus 37 back on January 30th, 1951. It's also a pretty snowy month for us. We typically rack up almost 13 inches of snow for the month of January. Now we have a little bit of snow in the forecast, but not much. Temperatures really on the warm side through the weekend with highs in the 30s, even 40s today. As we head into next week, we're going to trend a little bit closer to normal and it'll start feeling more like January. What's happening across the country? Well, at this time, we have a weak system moving through the upper Midwest. It's generating some light snow this morning. As it continues to move to the southeast, we may see a few sprinkles or very light showers here, but most locations likely staying dry. Not so dry in the southeast with this storm system tracking along the Gulf Coast. That today could produce some severe weather. There is a slight risk for severe weather in areas like New Orleans and parts of Alabama and Mississippi. So we'll keep our eye on that later today. That may cause some slowdowns in the southeast part of the country as far as air travel is concerned. Pretty wet in Memphis today as well as Washington, but highs near 60 in Washington. Temperatures will be in the 60s as well along the west coast, but more sunshine in that part of the country. Now here's a look at where we may see some travel delays. And again, the main focus is the southeast through the day today. As that front moves through, there may be some travel delays uh, at airports in that area of the country. Transitioning over to tomorrow, this is 3.30 in the afternoon, there may be some delays in the Great Lakes area here in Wisconsin as well due to some light snow that's in the forecast. These are the amounts though that we're talking about. Right now it looks like less than an inch, so not a major snow event for us at all. Weather track is pretty quiet this morning. There are patchy clouds across the area, but no major precipitation. 37 here in Madison, 39 in Janesville, even 40 in Boscobel and Lone Rock this morning. These are the actual air temperatures. We may drop a degree or two, but then we're heading up for the afternoon. When you factor in the wind, it feels like it's still in the low 30s, so not a bad day at all today. Your future track forecast model has temperatures back into the 40s by lunchtime in most locations. Southwesterly winds will continue, but they'll start to diminish later today. Our high temperature 44 here in Madison, 40 in Platte and 39 in the Dells. Temperatures won't cool down too much overnight. That extended forecast has a low of 30. There is a chance for some light snow later in the day on Friday, but looking pretty quiet for the upcoming weekend. Highs will be back in the 30s. Here's our pet walk forecast. Oh. Look at Scrappy and Con in Cottage <laughs> Grove. I don't know who's who there, but they're super cute. 44 degrees. That Husky probably be a little hot with 44 today. What a cute scrappy. I Love feel like it's got to be the husky, right? Yeah. It looks like a little scrappy. Definitely. So. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Hattie. You're welcome. The morning sprint is up next, but first here's Anthony Mason with what's ahead on CBS This Morning. Hi, Anthony. Good morning. Ahead on CBS This Morning, we're in Iraq as the U.S. deploys more troops to the region after the two-day attack on the U.S. Embassy. Former acting CIA Director Michael Morrell is here to break down the impact on U.S. foreign policy. Plus, in our More Perfect Union series, meet the seventh grader helping his colorblind peers experience the world in a whole new way. We'll see you at 7.
652 time for the morning sprint and everything you need to know as we get into the full swing of the new year. We start just across the Wisconsin Trying border where the new year means a new law legalizing recreational marijuana. A man from Madison was actually the first one to buy legal marijuana at one store. You saw him just there. He arrived at the store before midnight on New Year's Eve, waiting for doors to open at 6 a.m. He was far from the only one camping out that night. Illinois is now the 11th state to legalize the recreational use of marijuana. Marijuana is still illegal in Wisconsin, and officials who work along the state border with Illinois say they expect a ton of activity. The Wisconsin State Patrol says they'll pull any driver over if they have any indication that their car might contain marijuana, even if it's legally obtained. A first time marijuana possession offense is considered a misdemeanor and can get you up to six months behind bars and a thousand dollar fine. A second offense is a felony. The man accused of killing his sister on Christmas Eve is expected in court later this morning. 57 year old Joseph Green faces a charge of first degree intentional homicide in the death of his sister, Sheila. Police say Green shot her 15 times at her home on South Midvale Boulevard and called 911 before hanging up. Green is being held on a million dollar cash bond and faces life in prison. A Janesville man is facing charges this morning for firing off his gun from a balcony in celebration of the new year. Police found shell casings and a gun sitting in the vehicle of a parked car in front of a home on West Home Street and South Franklin Street west of the Rock River. A SWAT team executed a search warrant and detained three people. 29-year-old Zarek Hammett admitted to shooting off his gun to celebrate 2020. No injuries were reported. We're starting off on a very mild note this morning. Current temperatures are in the upper 30s, close to 40 degrees across southern Wisconsin. Temps will climb to highs in the mid 40s today. Look for quite a few clouds this afternoon, maybe in a few sprinkles as well across southern Wisconsin. Thank you very much, Hattie. New this morning, at least 17 people have been declared missing and one person has died as fires continue to rage across Australia. Video from Reuters shows the fires burning in the state of Victoria, around 170 miles from the capital city of Melbourne. 24 communities have been completely isolated by the raging brush fires. So far, the fires have destroyed 10 million acres in Australia. We're following a developing story overseas this morning after days of violence at the U.S. Embassy in Iraq. That violence has stopped, but tensions remain high. Iranian-backed protesters set fires through rocks and painted anti-American graffiti at the embassy for two days. They also destroyed a reception building at the compound's perimeter. The National Transportation Safety Board says plans are underway to recover the helicopter that crashed in Hawaii last week. That crash killed all seven passengers on board, including Madison resident Amy Gannon and her 13-year-old daughter Jocelyn. They say the helicopter fell 100 feet after hitting a ridge. The NTSB says their goal is to move the wreckage to a secure location where it can be examined more thoroughly. A Milton English teacher is retiring and has to pay a $6,000 fine for defecating in a public park for more than two years. That's according to the Janesville Gazette. Six-year-old Jeffrey Churchwell has been defecating outside of and on a building at Nature Land Park in the town of Whitewater. Churchwell started working for the Milton School District in 1990. His retirement takes effect January 16th. A local nightclub with a history of weapons violations is officially closed for the next three months. Visions Nightclub closed their doors at five last night. The city's Alcohol License Review Committee issued a club, the club a 90-day liquor license suspension back in November. The club has decided in that time their doors will remain closed over the next few months. Residents of a building in downtown Madison are still in the dark this morning as part of a power outage that's last several days. Managers at the Ovation on Johnson Street say damage to electrical equipment on New Year's Eve is causing the partial outage. They're telling residents they're trying to find replacement parts, but those parts are custom made and hard to find, meaning the outage could last five or six days. If you're thinking it's finally time to ditch the Christmas tree, the city of Madison is starting its curbside tree collection this morning. You should note they're only picking up trees. They won't accept wreaths, garland, or any other kind of holiday decoration. Those should go in your regular garbage. Collections will continue for the next couple of weeks with the final round starting on January 21st. The Badgers football team is headed home this morning after a disappointing end to the Rose Bowl. Four turnovers ended up hurting Wisconsin in a one point loss to Oregon, including one that allowed the Ducks to score the go ahead touchdown halfway through the fourth quarter. All right, almost 6.57 your time now. Let's turn it over to Stacy Kay with a look at your first alert traffic. Kay, Stacy. Hey, still moving well on the belt line, although as usual, well, the westbound side is starting to pick up between Stoughton and West Broadway. Park Street is busy as well. 
Inbound John Nolan tapping the brakes at the Rimrock and North Shore Drive intersections as you make your way into downtown. Another main route heading into the city, moving along at the posted speeds, no crashes or delays. With your first alert traffic, I'm Stacy Kay. And thank you, Stacy. Nice to see some sunshine early this morning. Take a live look from the Edgewater Skycam at the Capitol. No issues with fog early today. Enjoy that sun because clouds are likely going to fill in as we head through the morning into the afternoon. Your day planner temperatures take you to highs in the mid 40s though later on today. Just an outside chance for a few sprinkles or a light shower. That extended forecast though keeps temperatures a little bit cooler heading through the weekend with highs in the 30s. Thank you very much, Hattie. And thank you for joining us. Go make it a great day and we'll see you here tomorrow morning. It's your